Hi everyone and welcome to this fireside chat number six at Arpas UK. My name is uh, Annelise Calieres, I'm a director of Arpas and I am delighted to have this fireside chat with Craig, our new director for regulation and policy. So Craig, you've been engaging with our members and the regulator um, about uh, the implementation of UK SORA. It started on the 23rd of April. Can you give us some highlights in terms of how this process is going and the engagement you've got? Uh, of course, Annalise, thank you very much for having me on. Hello to the membership. Um, yes, yeah, so um, as Annalise has pointed out, UK SORA implemented on the 23rd of April. It introduced quite a number of questions from uh, our members with regard to the process, uh, particularly with how the application portal would actually work. I'm up front, I'm very happy to report that the CA have been very uh, forward leaning and very engaging in um, with, with the association. And particularly, I've got a routine engagement with the RPAS policy team at the CA where we're feeding back information and clarifying questions into them routinely to ask uh, for information on the guidance policy. It's an entirely new uh, risk assessment methodology, very different to that of the operating safety case uh, methodology. And the industry quite understandably is trying to navigate their way around some of the sort of the unknowns and the uncertainties about the methodology. And it's been six weeks or almost two months, I guess, um, since this introduction. And right at the very beginning, there was this issue among at least our membership about multi-site operations. One, because uh, it's not very practical to have uh, single site uh, authorizations. And two, because the cost of it, if you have to pay for the uh, uh, application process each time is, is challenging. Can you report any progress on this front? Yes, I can, and it's very encouraging progress. Um, at the ARPAS AGM that was at the end of April, um, the ARPAS policy, uh, SORA policy lead reported that multi-site applications were possible. We needed, uh, we asked for a little bit more clarification about what was required to submit an ARP, a, a multi-site application. Um, we have received that now, essentially the basic principle for multi-site applications is that they must conform with a single sale determination. So for instance, sale two, and the idea would be that uh, the applicant would define an example location and then in operational safety objective eight, they would set out a process to evaluate new sites. So, and that's really encouraging for um, potential applicants because obviously there was there was a lot of concern over the um, the applied costs of SORA and, you know, for operators that are operating across the country at, at, at different sites, the prospect of the sort of accrued costs for multiple SORA applications were quite daunting. So this is really welcome news from the CA. Um, we need, to, we're still working on, um, uh, on how we might apply those multi-site applications. Um, there are, I haven't yet seen any multi-site applications going forward. There's also a question on uh, generic applications across the UK that we're still trying to explore with the CA. More information to follow on that. And what about multi-UAS? Because obviously most drone operators do not have you know, a single platform, they use several systems. How do you think it's gonna work in terms of multi-UAS applications? Yeah, so I'm pleased to say that um, at the same time as receiving information about uh, multi-location uh, applications, we also received some guidance from the CA about multi-aircraft applications. And again, it's good news. They are prepared to accept multi-aircraft uh, applications. The basic principle is that, again, that the sale remains the same. The aircraft that they want to be detailed in the application is the largest in terms of the characteristic dimension and the maximum speed is the largest aircraft set out in that application and then uh, other aircraft will fit into the criteria that that uh, that guides that application uh, and importantly uh, if an applicant gets a new aircraft they can be added relatively easily to an existing operational authorization 
providing that the characteristic dimension and the maximum speed of the new aircraft doesn't exceed that of the largest aircraft in the original application. So it's really good news from the CA. I think there's still some work to do with them just to set out what that application looks like, but hopefully through um, uh, uh, engagement that's happening at the moment, um, we'll get a bit more information and we'll be able to pass that on to our members. So I guess it's a journey for everyone, for the regulator, as well for, as for us as an organization, our members, the drone operators. But um, I mean, it's positive. It's uh, you know so much better to have communication and engagement as opposed to questions or lack of clarity. So uh, I mean, it's really positive news. Now, in terms of going forward, I mean, there are still for sure plenty of questions to be uh, raised and then uh, responded to. How do you see the engagement going forward? So uh, it is indeed a journey um, of exploration about the new methodology and we are working collectively within the membership to understand you know, some of the main pain points for our members when it comes to application for Sora. I'm really pleased to uh, report that the engagement with the CA has been really encouraging. Um, they've So I have a routine uh, call with the RPAS Sora policy lead. I'm routinely feeding back to him uh, by email any observations made by our members on anomalies within the SORA guidance policy or anything observed about the functionality of the application portal. Um, he uh, responds routinely to that, so he's feeding that back into the relevant policy teams within the CA. Uh, so that's really encouraging. We haven't, that hasn't always been that level of um, communication and response from the regulator but you know it's really encouraging for the future because i think what you know we want to supercharge the industry to go out and and enable them to achieve you know our members to achieve what they want and um and the ca appears to be stepping up to the plate now so um in future we'll i'm going to have a routine touch point uh, with the civil aviation authority uh, rep on sora particularly uh, and any other reference points so the message to the membership is that if you have any uh, observations which you believe might be new or you have any experiences, particularly of your time going through an application on the application portal, which you think would would benefit the wider membership, please report it in either through the normal email channels or just meant drop into the Discord, um, uh, the Discord platform in the relevant channel and then just report it and then allow that information to sort of be be disseminated amongst the membership. And if, of course, if, you, if you've got any questions which you're unsure of, the same process applies. You know, throw a question in to us in the uh, in the association committee or pose the question in Discord and you'll find that there's a sort of a, a collective collegiate response. People are very eager to help other members of the industry um, answer their questions so that they can get on and do what they need to do. And I would add a comment for the broader community. RPAS is a membership organization, but we're keen to play our role in terms of supporting the overall uh, uh, industry, which is why we have this uh, uh, public um, uh, recording of uh, the process and the key initial findings about UK Sora. You can reach out to us at membership at arpas.uk. Uh, we'd be very happy to respond to uh, to questions. And then why not uh, encourage you to uh, uh, to join ARPAS. Thanks, Craig. Thanks very much for this update. Um, I'm sure we'll have plenty more in the uh, coming months. Thank you very much for having me on. It's been a real delight to uh, chat to you today. All right. Cheers. Thanks.